I hope I can retain your attention. I know it's uh, sometimes we can all feel a bit sleepy after lunch, but uh, hopefully going to have you on your feet very soon and uh, uh, working through these next sessions. So, as Sarah said, we're going to be looking at the, the uh, interactions of key actors to ensure well-functioning ACUS. And thank you again to everybody who completed uh, the Google documents. Um, so, the first question we asked under this heading is, how are researchers and Hor Horizon National Contact Points engaging with farmers, foresters, advisory, and innovation support services to develop practical solutions? So, it was quite clear that you know, everybody, a lot of people identified the lack of platforms and connectivity, and that there are difficulties in interconnecting farmers, advisory services, and innovations uh, supports. The example in Azores was given, and platforms uh, to facilitate these connections are not adequately developed. So there's work to be done there. Also, um, the respondents identified the limited collaboration and communication. And, and this is look, this is very general, um, but it was it was emerging from most of the respondents, and that researchers often lead innovative projects but face challenges in engaging non-research stakeholders and. Uh, lack expertise in communication and extension, and the coordination between classical researchers and farmers and advisory services is generally weak. So I think we touched on some of those new approaches this morning as to how uh, the stakeholders can be better engaged uh, through uh, co-creation and being involved uh, from the start. So in terms of what is, is what are the positive uh, approaches being taken? So there are efforts be, uh, to build connections. So several countries have initiatives to improve collaboration between researchers, advisors, and farmers. And examples include joint activities, uh, information sharing, networking sessions, the creation of knowledge reservoirs at national levels, um, and then dissemination platforms such as websites, events, and training courses are being utilized to bridge the gap between research and practice. So one of the examples uh, that was presented was from Luxembourg, where uh, they have developed a platform with all projects and the results funded by the ministry uh, being available. And the link to scientific community is strong and established as they launched two calls together with the National Funding Agency, and they organize networking sessions with farmers, advisors, and researchers, and they do a big advertisement and promotion of their funding possibilities. Uh, they'll be doing that this summer at agricultural exhibitions to farmers. So they're really getting down to the ground level in terms of promoting these types of activities, rather than just being advertised to research, research uh, bodies. The second question was how are advisors and researchers incentivized uh, to work together? And in general, uh, it was identified that there is a lack of structured collaboration between advisors and researchers, and the current modes of collaboration are often informal or project-specific. Uh, there are initiatives to foster this collaboration. Some countries have introduced measures such as funding programs and innovation platforms to encourage joint work between advisors, researchers, and farmers. And then uh, digital platforms and discussion groups are being established to facilitate knowledge sharing and debate between the different actors. Uh, and of course, as we discussed earlier on today, it's important to use uh, and leverage the existing collaboration channels. Uh, so collaborative efforts between researchers and advisors are observed in specific projects, demonstration farms, and training courses. However, private advisory services are not always uh, fully engaged in these collaborations. So it's important to identify or map out who are the important uh, uh, actors that need to be involved in these collaborations. Uh, so, some examples uh, from France, uh, some funds are only available for advisors and researchers working together. So these funds are dedicated really to, to foster collaboration between advisors and researchers. In the Rhineland Palat Palatinate, uh, the state is uh, supporting a knowledge hub for the digitization of, uh, in agriculture. And partners of the hub are the Technical University. I'm not going to even attempt to pronounce that uh, uh, name, but uh, Rural Development Centres, uh, Farmers, and uh, Partners in Agribusiness. 
And in Ireland, uh, researchers and advisors work together in a common organization uh, within Chagisk. So question number three, how are researchers incentivized to, uh, supported to share their research findings with advisors, farmers or for foresters and wider, the wider society? So limited state incentives uh, was common across a lot of responses. Uh, there were no specific programs or incentives to support knowledge exchange, but partnership between knowledge hubs and universities indirectly did facilitate collaboration. Uh, platforms and events for knowledge sharing, such as agricultural magazines, meetings, conferences, field days, webinars, and publications are used to share research results and promote interaction between researchers and advisors. And if something came up with our discussion earlier on, the importance of that feedback from the bottom, from farmers, advisors, through to uh, researchers and policy makers. So engagement in projects and training, researchers and advisors collaborate in EIP operational groups, participate in demonstration events, and contribute as lecturers during training sessions and field days. So it's advisors and researchers working together on these particular uh, dissemination activities. Um, so the second, uh, I've been asked to uh, put forward the, the uh, responses in advance of the third uh, session today. So looking at the interlinkages between ACUS interventions to increase knowledge flows. So the first question was asked, we were, you were asked, describe how you will improve your ACUS in member states. Um, so let's we'll skip on to the, 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 the second part, uh, enhancing knowledge sharing and collaboration. So various activities such as workshops, conferences, events, and digital platforms are being implemented to foster cooperation, dissemination of research findings, and facilitate exchange between researchers, advisors, and practitioners. Improving advisory services and reducing fragmentation. So steps are being taken to improve the quality of advisory services, reduce fragmentation within the ACA system, and promote the implementation of agricultural knowledge and innovations uh, through partnerships and thematic initiatives. Question two, what specific tools, instruments, structures and interventions have you developed to support better knowledge exchange and innovation? So uh, the example uh, here uh, from Ecovelia, providing training and seminars and specialized courses in organic farming, uh, focusing on practical knowledge transfer to farmers and advisors. Um, there was a FAS register, or FAS register project uh, to improve farming and advisory skills, building trust and uh, government support through vouchers for farmers. I think that was in the Netherlands. And then the, the GeoBrox infrastructure in Rhineland provides a single point of entry for information and knowledge. So this is the uh, concept of having a uh, single point of, of uh, for, for, for technical knowledge to, to uh, access that and that you know and have confidence that this information has been based on solid evidence. And then the final one then, ACUS interventions include communication platforms, coordination of international engagements and forms uh, for forums for competence development of advisors. So communications obviously really, really important and needs to be uh, funded and supported here. So continuing on with specific tools, instruments, and structures, various countries have implemented advisory services, digital platforms, and knowledge hubs to strengthen their ACUS, and they're emphasizing training, communication, coordination, and knowledge exchange amongst ACUS actors to support innovation and sustainability in agriculture. So a few examples, again, from the Netherlands, where they are trying to listen to the needs of the ACUS network. And that one stood out for me, actually, because that was, a, I think, one of few that actually talked about that upwards, the importance of that upwards feedback and to create the channels uh, to allow for that and, and to, to listen and to support. They were the two strong words that I think are coming out of the sessions this morning as well. So when designing new regulations, we try to adapt to that, uh, to, to support the ACA system. In Greece, it's planned to operate a specialized unit in a supervised uh, organization of the Ministry of Rural Development and Food as an open uh, office uh, structure, a back office structure. And this unit will be dedicated to supporting farm advisors and supporting vocational agricultural education and training. Uh, so that's similar to 
a system we have in operation in Chagask in Ireland. We have a team of specialists who are linking between research and uh, farm, farm level. And then in Ireland, there was an example where Chagask has introduced a dedicated service uh, for delivering training and knowledge transfer programs to industry professionals through the Connected. And it, it, it provides uh, dissemination, communication, and training opportunities to uh, ACUS and rural actors. So you'd be glad to hear that's the end of my uh, presentation. So all the answers <laughs> are, are mixed in there somewhere, but it's now up to you all to maybe to, to, to come up with those questions and uh, give your feedback at, at the, uh, the breakout sessions now. So hand back to you, Sarah.